your hands together for Rebecca Rodman and Jason Echo. Yeah. 
travel all over the place, uh, doing all sorts of concerts, and almost all the time we get to meet lots of nice people, and every once in a while we just piss everybody off. <laughs> and where that tends to happen the most is with the traditional bluegrass crowd. And it's not the audiences, it's the other artists. Whole Facebook post devoted to dirty cello doesn't play bluegrass music. And for whatever reason, their biggest problem is with the cello of all things. Oh. Now, we're playing a bluegrass festival a while back, and there was a man whose name I'm not going to say on stage there, and he's considered the father of modern bluegrass music on the fiddle, of course. And he got a load of us doing bluegrass music featuring the cello. And he found us backstage, he sat down with Rebecca and said, you know who I am? And she's like, yeah, I know who you are. And he said, okay, so I see you're doing this cello bluegrass stuff. You need to stop. <laughs> and he proceeded to list all of the reasons why Rebecca was ruining the art of bluegrass music. So she got in the car pretty mad about that and pulled up his entry on Wikipedia. And there's a line on there that said, at all his concerts, he plays his signature song, on the fiddle, of course. And Rebecca said, I'm going to learn that on the cello. <laughs> so this is our rendition of the Orange Blossom Special. Uh -huh.
we are married. Um, we've been married for seven years. Seven years. Um, sometimes we get that wrong. And um, we met as college music majors at a small college called Cal State Hayward in, near San Francisco. And Rebecca was the star um, cello student um, for classical cello, and I was the not star flute player. Um, and um, I, we tried playing for a lot of years um, classical cello and flute duets, and it turned out nobody wanted to hear that. <laughs> um, but after a while, we started the whole dirty cello project. We'll tell you more about that later. But of course, since we've been together for quite some time, we have those moments where we're not totally agreeing with each other, right? And um, during one of those not totally agreeing with each other moments, Rebecca looked over at me and said, well, you know what? I may not be perfect, but I'm pretty damn good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> And I had a very bad answer for that. I looked right back at her and said, that would make a great song title. Now, after the dust settled, we did write a song, and it was, of course, called I May Not Be Perfect, But I'm Pretty Damn Good, and none of the rest of the song is autobiographical. <laughs>
traveling musicians for a living, and at this point in time in the concert, we're supposed to uh, tell a sad story about the past couple years of performing and everything. But we don't actually have a sad story. We only missed three weekends of performance, but it got very weird. We tried all those horrible live streams, we did the concerts on Zoom, and no one liked that. Um, we started working for Google, and that was unsatisfying. We got paid to perform live streams in empty theaters, which was also unsatisfying. And after a while, Rebecca read an article, though, in the, Oakland, um, in the local paper that said that animals at the Oakland Zoo were missing having people around. So she wrote him an email and said, would the animals like a concert? <laughs> And they surprisingly said yes. So we rounded up the band and dragged it out to the Oakland Zoo, and the keepers took us around to perform for the animals. First stop was the goats, and they were wildly disinterested. <laughs> Next they took us over to the elephants, who immediately walked away. Except for one who returned, and she started dancing from side to side, and we thought, okay, here's our moment, the elephant's dancing. Keeper runs over and stops us immediately and says, that's how she shows she's angry. <laughs> um, over to the otters, no reaction. I think the keepers were getting bored at this point in time, so they took us in the enclosure with the giant tortoise and had us play some Guns N' Roses for the giant tortoise, <laughs> which walked over to a mud puddle and went to sleep. There's actually a video of that. Um, then they took us over to the parrots. We thought if anybody's going to like it, it's going to be the parrots. So we're playing for the macaws, and there's no reaction. But out they bring a little tiny green parrot named Brock, short for broccoli, and it's the one they take to the elementary schools. And Rebecca's playing the blues, and we're kind of going along, and all of a sudden this little parrot starts singing with us, perfectly in tune. And he's taking little solos, and Rebecca's playing to him, he's playing back, and it was like, great. And they filmed the whole thing. So that went out everywhere. And it's on all the local news stations, and doing all these interviews and everything like that. And when you're done, you know, today's concert, just type in Dirty Cello and Parrot, and it'll pop right up, and you see the whole video. And it kind of went around everywhere. We started getting all this fan mail about it and things like that. And before long, the real NBC morning show gives us a call and says, we're going to put you on air with Brock. We need a feel-good story. And we thought, okay, here's our big moment. So they sent a film crew to the Oakland Zoo. And we brought out the whole band. And we set up. And we started the same song that Brock sang to before. And out they bring Brock and... <laughs> so we try another song. Nothing. Two and a half hours later, we've played the beginnings of every song we could think of. We've given him treats, we've let him rest, we've put him in the shade, we've moved to a different location, and never sang again with us. <laughs> However, keep your eye on America's Funny Home Videos, because they're going to put the original video on that pretty soon. They're going to have an animal episode, and that will be one of the videos being featured. Now, um, after that, we realized we really need to perform for people more, because they were not so into it. So, um, we started playing at Buffalo is where they make bison burgers, or grow bison burgers, I guess, and you can really spread people out on a giant buffalo ranch. Each family was given a hay bale, played an apple orchard the same way, but someone called the cops on us, so it was unpleasant. And um, then we found a place in California, or a type of place, that never closed, no matter what. Stayed open through the entire thing. And that turned out to be nudist resorts. <laughs> and before anyone gets any ideas, we kept our clothes firmly on. No one else did, though. And I remember we get up there, and we're on a big stage, and there's a couple hundred people out in the crowd, and we look out there, and everybody was following the rules. They were standing six feet distant, and they were wearing their masks. <laughs> and Rebecca just gets the giggles, and she calls the whole band over, and she says, you know, they always say, whenever you're nervous, picture the audience. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't really work in real life. <laughs> so we start off with some groovy rock and roll. We had the drums and the bass and the keyboard and everything with us. And people are dancing, which was weird. And um, <laughs> then all of a sudden, without thinking about it, I call a very fast bluegrass song. We just go flying into this blisteringly fast song. And as Rebecca says about that, you can never unsee. <laughs> the way the dancing started, and then because it's Northern California, the hula hoops came out. Um, so over all the pandemic stuff, we traveled, all sorts of stuff, we became the band you hire for New Kissers Resort. We had five naked concerts, um, and we became the band that played at all the zoo reopenings, too. We searched for a band to play um, at zoos, we pop right up. So 
So in honor of all that, we're going to play the same fast bluegrass song we played for the naked people. Please don't picture what we saw. <laughs> Thank you. 
And so you find this online, you see Rebecca come walking in, the cello case is empty. We've been there for hours. And then they say, okay, do your pre-concert stretches. And she, she's like, I don't stretch before a concert. And they're like, nope, do it. And they film her doing stretches. And it was all this setup. And so every couple hours they'd say, all right, you're on, go, go, go. And they'd run her up to the stage. And then they say, never mind, and send her backstage. And the whole idea was to kind of get her hyped up and ready to cry and have all these problems and stuff like that. And so they did that. I think we were there for six, seven hours. And finally she goes out on stage and she starts rocking out. And if you listen to it online, you'll hear the audience booing. But they added the booing in later. And if you listen closely, you can hear a loop of the booing where they just kind of re recycled the same booing over and over again. And so she's playing along. And, 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 and she gets X'd out by the judges, and they begin attacking her, trying to make her cry. And they say things like, you can't make a living playing the cello, can you? And she kind of giggles at that and says, oh, no, I make a great living. And they didn't like that answer very much. And then they say, cello is not meant to be played as a solo instrument. She's all, actually, you know, it's a very long history of being a solo instrument. They hated that answer, too. And they said a few more mean things. And finally, Sharon Osborne, of all people, who married to Ozzy Osborne, looks at her and goes, when I die and go to hell, your music will be the soundtrack. <laughs> Which was pretty harsh. That was Rebecca's response, though. She kind of giggled through the whole thing. And finally, they say, OK, can you play any better? And she's like, no, that's what they sound like. And they throw her off the stage. And as she's coming <laughs> off, they put a camera in her face. And they say, you've just been humiliated in front of millions of people. How do you feel? And they wanted her to flip off the camera, scream, something like that. She looks right at the camera and says, thank you very much for the opportunity. And they really hated that answer. <laughs> so what you call it? The question then is, how did she keep her cool on stage, right? How did I keep my cool backstage waiting for her? We have a very good answer for that. At that point in time in our careers, we were actually public school music teachers. <laughs> and those children are a lot scarier than those judges, <laughs> as are their parents. Um, so that was the whole beginning of the Dirty Cello Project. Now, we're not going to play the obscure Joe Satriani song, but we are going to play the song Rebecca wanted to, hate, wanted to play, which is Jimi Hendrix's Purple Haze. <laughs>
with lots of driving, but we are sticking around here for a couple days, mm -hmm. and we have um, another band called the San Francisco Yiddish Combo, which is a traditional klezmer band, and we will be playing let me, at, where are we playing? Make the... Israel in here um, on Tuesday, right? And if you go to their website or look at San Francisco Yiddish Combo, you can find tickets there. Now, Klezmer music is an interesting thing. It's a folk music of Eastern European Jewish folks, and it's a very lively, fun sound. And there's no good definition for exactly what Klezmer music sounds like because it gets borrowed from a lot of different cultures. So we're going to do a song that's popular from our set from there if you want to come see us. And this is a song that you know it probably, but it depends on how old you are. <laughs> so it's either an old Greek folk song, or an old Klezmer song, or it's a Dick Dale surf rock song, or it's that one song from the movie Pulp Fiction. <laughs>
went off the rails, <laughs> especially in Wyoming. <laughs> that didn't go well at all. Does anyone have any good ideas, genres, styles of songs? Oh, how about Janis Joplin? Janis Joplin. Which one? Bobby McGee.
think there's a reception afterwards, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and we have CDs for sale, um, which we may have brought a lot of, and may not be quite fitting in the suitcase. Um, we have a CD of all our fans' favorite 60s songs um, called Dirty Cello Smokes the 60s, and it's in a bright yellow one. This is all with the full band. We have another one called, I may not be perfect, but I'm pretty damn good, with mostly original music. We have um, one called By Request, which we took all the audience requests for two years, wrote them all down, and recorded the top 11 requests. Um, we have a traditional bluegrass CD with banjo and three-part harmonies and everything. And of course, we have some CDs for the San Francisco Yiddish Combo performance. Um, and we have tank tops and t-shirts and some very, very cool hats. And again, our luggage is a little full, so if you could help out with that, would be great. We also have little half-sized flyers of all the places we'll be over the next few days. Um, obviously, the one here in Savannah. Then we'll be in High Springs, Florida. Um, then in Dunedin on... Dunedin? Thank you. We've not got that right on, um, what is that, Thursday? Or? Yeah, I think Thursday. Yeah. And then we'll be um, in Northport, Florida, at a venue yeah. there. And then we'll be over in Lynn Haven, um, over on the, um, where is that? That's in Okay, cool. Canyon. There we go. We don't quite have the geography down yet. Um, <laughs> anyways, our first couple hours in Georgia have been a lot of fun. Thank you all for being here. We're going to wrap things up with our favorite song to end with. And which one is that, Rebecca? The House of the Rising Sun. There is a house in New Orleans. They come.